This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Kryptonite model KS72 round body padlock. This is a nicely built product with a solid steel lock body that's actually five millimeters larger in diameter than a normal round body padlock, and I'll explain why that is in just a moment. Then we have an 11 millimeter molybdenum alloy shackle, and that's always a nice feature to see because it's going to offer a lot more cut resistance than a normal hardened steel shackle or even one made out of a boron alloy. Holding the shackle closed is a ball bearing locking mechanism that can't be shimmed. And finally, the feature which really sets this lock apart is the fact that it takes a full size key in a full size key and knob cylinder. And that's why this lock is a little bit larger to accommodate that larger key and knob cylinder. That's actually a very rare feature in these round body padlocks. I can only think of a couple of them offhand, the Lockwood Model 301, Packlock has their Model 900 kick. I'm sure there's others, I can't think of them offhand. But what we have in this one is a standard Schlage key and knob cylinder. So despite the fact that the cylinder that comes in this lock is not terribly impressive as far as pick resistance goes, we have a lot of options for improving the lock. Of course, we can swap in some security pins, which would help this an awful lot, or we could go with something high security, like this Schleg Primus key and knob cylinder, which would drop right in, or maybe a multi-lock. You can really get almost any kind of core you want in this Schleg format key and knob cylinder, an Asa Twin, a Bi-Lock, you name it, you can probably find it. So here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna see what it takes to pick this guy open. Then we'll take it apart, see what's inside. I'll put it together with a couple of security pins. And finally, we'll see how it picks after we improve it. So let's get started. It's a lot to do. We have a Schlage C keyway, and I normally deal with them by using a 50 thousandths pry bar in the top of the keyway and a standard hook in 25 thousandths. One is loose, so is two. Three is binding, got to click there. Click out of four, nothing on five. Back to the beginning. Little click on one, click on two, nothing on three, nothing on four, five is binding and we got it open. Okay, I did not feel any security pins. I'm assuming they're all standard, but let's take it apart and make sure that's the case. To get this apart, we have a Phillips screw right down the shackle hole. Okay, we've got the cylinder out. And as you can see, a standard Schlage format key and knob cylinder, nothing unusual about it. Getting these apart tends to be a bit of a pain. You have to push down on this detent while unscrewing the back cap. Okay, that one was pretty painless. Okay, now we just need a key and a follower and we should be able to get this apart. Okay, we can see this is a six pin cylinder, but only five of the chambers are populated. That's always a disappointment to see. All standard key pins, and I am expecting the same for our driver pins. Standard in one, same in two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's put it back together. I'm going to replace four of the five standard pins here with spools. So let's put a spool in the back in slot five. Then I'll put a standard pin in slot four. a spool in three, a spool in two, and a spool 
in slot one. Now the reason I left a standard pin in slot four is to aid in inserting and withdrawing the key. If you have all spools in there, there'll be a tendency for the core to move just a little bit and your key can be hard to pull out. The reason I put it in slot four in particular is that is a really low cut. So there's really no opportunity for a spool to come into play. So it would be wasted in that cylinder. It's a good place to put that spool. Okay, let's get these key pins back in the core. And before I put this back together, let's just insert the key and make sure we didn't get any of them out of order. And you can see all of those key pins line up with the outside of the cylinder. So it looks like we did that correctly. Okay, now let's get the back cap back on here. Hmm. You know, for all I'm worth, I can never remember which way these go in. Let me see if looking in the back helps. Okay, I think it goes like that. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. Now I have to push that detent down while tightening this cap on the lock. Okay, let's make sure that works before I put it back in the lock. No problems there. Okay, there's a small travel limiter inside of there that seems to have gotten out of place. I'm going to try to put that back in correctly. And you know what? I think I did put this, this driver in wrong. Hopefully I'll be able to fix it just by pushing that detent all the way down. Now I'm gonna to have to loosen this up just a bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I think that should go together correctly now. Just wiggle it a bit. There we go. Okay, now that we confirm the lock does work, I can drop this screw back in and tighten it back on. Okay. Okay, let's see what it takes to pick this guy open now that we've improved it. One's loose, so is two. Little click out of three. Four is binding. Nothing on five. Pulling back, I just hit, I think, two again. One's binding tightly. Okay, we pushed him and got a nice false set. Nothing else out of one. Nothing on two, three, four. Okay, counter rotation on five. Got him set, but we lost our false set. Okay, click out of one. Nothing on two, three, four, or five. Back to the beginning. One, two, three. There we go, three. Got a click there, click out of four. Nothing on one. I think I might have overset something, and I think it was number two. I released a little bit of tension, and we are 
back to where we should be. Counter rotation on one, nothing on two, nothing on three, four. Okay, little counter rotation on five, got him set. Back to the beginning, counter rotation on one, and we got it open. Okay, so a lot more of a challenge now that we have some spools in there. That cylinder actually had some pretty good tolerances to it. So once we got some spools in there, we played a little bit of ping pong, dropping one spool while, while we set another. That always makes for a very challenging pick. So that's one option you can use for improving this KS72, or as I mentioned, you could just drop a whole new cylinder in there. So that's all I have for you today on this Kryptonite model KS72 round body padlock. If you do have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.